and family reunion. I'm so happy to have each and every one of you here today. This is probably, I feel like, one of the most creative tables that we're gonna have over the weekend. There's so much talent, I'm looking around. I think we should all actually start our own business together. I don't know. I think we should just make that happen. We all got different creative outlets that we can all utilize in some sense. Uh, but today, we're gonna be talking about basically the meshing between the game and art and design. So I want to go through, ask each of you individually, how the game has inspired you in some sense to create and have this creative outlet outside of sports. So I know each of you has a story to tell. Shall we do ladies first with Hannah? Get it started over here. So Hannah, I know that you ho you do a lot for ESPN as far as social media goes. I have seen your social media page. I need you to run mine with your videos. You're so quirky and well thorough and thought through with the videos you produce. So tell me, what got you into working with ESPN and using social media as an outlet for art? Started at the NBA, eventually ended up at ESPN, and my own platform, O'Flintstone, kind of gave me a creative outlet to completely create things that I wasn't necessarily able to do at work. Um, so certain ideas that I had or something that was a little bit more outside of the box and innovative, I was able to just execute that on my own platform. So I think that's just been a huge outlet to me. And because I love basketball and basketball is so infused in the culture, of fashion, art, music, it was just like an easy no-brainer and something that naturally kind of happened, so. Your basketball videos, I need to take some cues <laughs> from you. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the really, angles. You're really looking good on camera, let me tell you. You do an impeccable job. <laughs> all right, so D, you are known for Legos. Oh yeah. I know oh. we're missing your brother today. You also have a creative outlet as far as dance and the two mesh so uniquely in a way together. Can you tell us what inspired you to get involved with your craft? Um, so basically like, you know, with the fashion and art, uh, our grandmother, she inspired us. Um, you know, she like rudimentally uh, taught us how to sew at a young age and you know, she was like always like uh, you know, making clothes for us and stuff like that. So um, we used to always like, you know, tear our pants and like write on them, do like little graffiti stuff at a young age, me and my twin. And um, I don't know, people found it interesting and they would buy it. So, you know, we started uh, recycling fabrics like around like, you know, late middle school, early like high school. And we would like rip the pants up and start, uh, you know, sewing like old like patchwork and, you know, just clothes we found onto the pockets and stuff like that. And, you know, more people started liking it, liking it in high school. Um, and then, you know, what brought us with the game, like, you know, uh, I remember one day we found some, uh, like, uh, old school, like, uh, thrifted um, jackets, like NBA jackets, and we started ripping them apart, and we uh, turned them into uh, bags, and, you know, we got real popular with that, ah. and, yeah, we, like, we're known to recycle stuff, so we'd always, like, play with, like, weird toys, you know, it wasn't, like, regular that black kids played with Legos, like, that's the thing, so we, like, would always recycle Legos, and, um, you know, one day, uh, we wore um, one of our pieces to the Hamptons and Mark Jacobs seen our stuff. Yeah, wow. and he was like, yo, I want that stuff on my runway show. So that just like really broke us into like, you know, luxury fashion. So, you know, then we really found our niche is like to recycle like, you know, you know, older things and yeah, basically recycle stuff and turn it into fashion. I love yeah, the, yeah. the gra grandma story. My grandma used to make me costumes growing up too, but that never transpired, unfortunately, into anything. I, she, she made us that too, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of embarrassed though, because we're triplets actually, oh, and yeah. she like made like three little pumpkin outfits. I wanted to be a Ghostbuster. <laughs> grandma. I know, right? Gra Grandma's always have the best ideas. I know, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> but Mark Jacobs, I mean, wow, incredible I know, it was that you nuts. ran into him. Yeah, it was insane. It took yeah, off, that was and like as well as dancing. So you do dancing as well. No, I, I don't dance. I can, but I oh. don't. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, why did I think you danced as well? But anyways, Legos, cool. I also wasn't that great at putting them together, unfortunately, but um, it has inspired me now. I think we need to put some Legos in some of your videos. Oh, yeah. And uh, you. You, know, you know we're gonna put you. something together that's gonna be the perfect collaboration. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> Heck yeah. Sounds good. All right, Brian. Mr. Brian, hey, you are an entrepreneur. You got your own clothing brand. 
making moves. You also used to play professional basketball as a side note. Yes, played a little bit. Uh, it's always been a love of mine since I was about 9, 10 years old. Uh, the game was kind of a therapeutic outlet for me, uh, losing my father when I was young, but kind of lost myself in the game of basketball and had a crazy dream when I was like 10 years old to uh, make the NBA. Had a crazy list when I was the day before fifth grade. I'm like, I'm going to do, I listed 25 goals. The 25th was to make it in the NBA. When I told you I try to do anything and everything to accomplish that, I did. So uh, the game kind of taken me all over the world. So I uh, played professionally in Kuwait, Italy, France, Israel, the Dominican Republic. Got a couple shots in the league with the Knicks and Nets in training camp. Uh, got drafted in the G League. But what really set me apart was playing at the Rucker up in New York City. And I knew the Rucker was like the place to make a name. So they told me, if you want to play at the Rucker and make a name, you got to bring your game. So a few couple, couple games I couldn't get on the court. It, was, it took me a while. But one time I got hot early and often. And it went from every single nickname you could think of, like 98 Degrees, Nick Lachey. Wow, you could just picture degrees, every single name. Back. I love them. Don't make me sing the song now. No, I will right now, actually. I think I had about 35 at the time, and the announcer, Hannibal, if he's listening on the mic, said, if you drop 40, we'll get you a nickname. So did a couple step-back moves, hit a three, and they said Nick Lachey, a.k.a. Smoking Aces in the building. So ah, if you make a nickname in New York City, from. yeah, if you make a nickname in New York City, kind of carries you. I remember at the time, humbly speaking, I wasn't in the league yet, so I got shoe deals from And One, K1X, wow. and K1X. Um, the following summer, went to go back to the Rucker to defend my scoring title, and I ruptured my Achilles. So I Achilles. saw the impact my story had of hustle and heart, overcome the odds. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to drop smoke and aces, turn into brand aces, and start telling stories to apparel. So the last three to four years, started doing these celebrity basketball games, building a brand backwards with our partner Nike, and just getting guys and influencers through my network. And slowly but surely, we started telling stories through the culture of basketball and just grew. So from like 10,000 feet, picture like Nike, Kith, and Supreme kind of having a baby. People laugh, but that's us, but we're telling stories through apparel. And I think it's just so authentic when you got these uh, inspirational messages like walk on, hustle and heart. You can connect it to a apparel and threads. I think it authentically and organically relates to the culture, and that's why we're here. So it's been a humbling three, four years as founder man. But slowly but surely, we got a good team, and uh, we're going to look forward to continue to make an impact to the game. Wow, I love that. A good story is what really is making a difference these days. So I love what you're doing with your brand. You're actually sitting next to somebody who also dabbles a little bit. He's actually rocking his stuff oh, right now. Hey, you Milan. got to, you got to. Got you to are, you're rocking the brand on you. I love it. That's the first yeah. thing I saw was your jacket when I, when I met you. Right, it's right. fresh. Yeah, so sure. tell us a little bit about your creative outlet, your brand, what has inspired you to get it started and off the ground, and maybe you two can do a collaboration together. Hey. I don't know. With hey. Wilson, right? With uh, Wilson? With Wil right. Yes. <laughs> hint, hint, Wilson, uh, if you're listening to us. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, basically for me, I was also a former athlete. Um, but I think for me, seeing both sides of the game, what I do now as an influencer, um, I've had the game stripped from me. So I, I broke my leg when I was playing college. Well, right before I got to college, I broke my leg and the game was stripped from me. So I still went on to play college basketball, but after the fact, I realized how important it was that the game can, it can be gone, you know what I mean? So I had to figure out a way to pivot, and still stay involved, but you know what I mean? How can I make a new mark, not in the athlete sense? So for me, the best thing that could have happened was COVID because just like everybody else, everything was stripped, right? We couldn't go anywhere where I was. They were taking the rims down off of the basketball courts. Kids couldn't go play anywhere, right? So I just went to the, the drawing board. I was like, I got to get creative. I got to figure out a way to connect with my audience. I was doing motivational speaking at the time. It was like, I'm about to start walking around the house, seeing what I can make with household items that kids from all over the world I can connect with can get better and improve at home you know so I started doing different things like I said more so from the performance aspect trying to help people get better at home and one thing led to another one video one viral video after another um, you know here I am now I'm making decors sneaker fridges uh, whatever I saw some Nikes on the network app uh, hey. that I, I need hey 
Hey, those were I, fresh. Those Air Force Ones, you know what I'm talking about? Hey, no. Yeah. Oh, I'm a, I'm a huge <laughs> sneakerhead. But you want to send the, them, them over the whole my point. way? I don't know. You know what I mean? You, t you tie all that in together and you, you don't have to be a basketball player or a former basketball player to actually enjoy the game. You know what I mean? Like, you don't ever have to play basketball to really have a, a true love for it. So what I'm trying to do with my brand is just connect everybody through basketball. And, you know, it's just been it's been an honor. It's been a blessing the past few years to really take my platform to another level and be able to connect with everybody all over the world. So, yeah. Well, it's truly inspiring to hear that you took that time during COVID to really take action. Because I think a lot of people either went left or right. Some just decided to binge watch. Absol hey, a absolutely. lot of us decided to get off our butts and actually hey, do something with that time, COVID, but it's inspiring. COVID was either going to make or break you, you know what I mean? Yep. I made sure it was going to make me, and like I said, it was really the best thing for me that could have happened in terms of my brand. And I think on the corporate st in a corporate stance, it sort of exposed everybody to realize, like, you don't have to be in the office or you know you can be at home grinding doing your thing so i think honestly covid was a blessing in disguise for all of us um but for me especially that's that's what took off for me and so yeah, yeah i think hannah and i were even talking a little bit about her being able to work from home which is amazing too yeah. so you get to Can't create you Can't know in your own space which is lovely yeah, i know absolutely she's a nomad traveling <laughs> take me with you hannah i want to go travel the world with you now <laughs> I will assist you with all of your, your social media content if you need it. I'll carry your bags, you know, you just let me know what you need help with. I got you. <laughs> all right, so next up, we've got Corey. You've got quite the following on some of your social media platforms, Corey. You've done a great job just pounding away at your content. I love to see it. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what transpired to get you started in that direction? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I've always uh, grown up, you know, being an artist and trying to figure out a way to make, you know, money and a living being an artist. It's one of those things, you know, the starving artist trope. I have, my whole family was, you know, lawyers and judges and things of that nature. So, you know, decided not to go to school and just pursue, you know, art in a type of fashion is something that took a lot of convincing for them on their part. And, you know, a video. So you're not a judge. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not today, but you know, not today. You know, the video with a million views will get your parents to think you're doing something serious real quick. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so took that talent and uh, trying to transform it. You know, I've always had two things, which is a love for art and a love for basketball. You know, of course, I grew up trying to be like these guys over here and uh, make it to the league. Of course, you know, and then I realized I wasn't six foot eight and uh, my knee hurt. So I was like, maybe let's not do that. I'll just play, you know, when I get time, and I'll find a way to get to the NBA a different way. So I put a pen and pencil to a pair of shoes and uh, got it on a couple of NBA guys and. Started the ball rolling that way on a bigger, better nature and uh, hopped on YouTube, got a show with Overtime, do these things like that, and just started blowing the ball up as best as possible. So now, you know, I get to sit here and, you know, do stuff like this, you know, and who never threw, you know, I never knew that a, you know, paintbrush and, you know, some paint could get you to do something like this or hanging out in Shaq's house and listening to Damian Lillard diss tracks and, you know. Hanging out in Shaq's <laughs> house, of, no big yeah, deal. Yeah. All types of random stuff, you know, so. You know, you get to see that, and then I get to see my work on guys like John Morant and James Harden and all these other players that are, you know, wow. doing great, crazy things that get made into NFTs and everything else, and I get to watch it all and see what's going on and things I never thought I'd be able to do. So, you know, you never know what you can get into if you actually put the time and effort into it. What do you think about the NFT world? Uh, I think it's like when, you know, the cell phones first dropped and then, you know, the internet started blowing up. It's one of those things that you might not get right now, but, you know, yeah. in 10, 20 years, it'll be secondhand nature like anything else. And we'll like be you're going to have an art thing. piece NFT. Do we all have dibs on it? Oh, yeah, sure. Let me know. You know, we, so we're working on sure. a couple. We're working on right? a couple. Each yeah. of us at this table gets one. Of course. Everybody gets <laughs> one of those. It's only fair. Of course. <laughs> exactly. Family rate. We get that free discount. I don't wait, know. Wait. Some of you guys got money. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no discounts. We got you. All right, right. I, I know how that goes too. I know how that goes too. the company. So yeah, so we just try to expand and work on it, and you know, and I came into the issue of you know doing all this work for all these celebrities and athletes, and you know, and I get a lot of kids. You know, it's overtime. I get a lot of kids and people like that asking me for shoes and trying to buy stuff. You know, they can't afford everything like that. So I'm trying to expand and find new ways to make sure the product and the art that I create can get as many people as possible. By things like you know the clothing line that we're rocking and we're wearing. I was now gonna say you're rocking nature. it head to toe right now. We got yeah, the, the cap, we got the hoodie on. Yeah, yeah. So I we're love trying, those you know, colors. We're getting everything ready. Start launching stuff. You know, it's the first rollout we did for All Star Weekend this year, and we're ramping up from here on out. So trying to make sure we got enough pieces for everybody to get what they want. And uh, if it's shoes, cool. And if it's not, you got something else you can go for too. Hey, yeah. I'm into it. All right. Next up, we've got Chuck. Chuck, you've been quiet over there. I feel like I've neglected you. 
We have now made it to the man at the table, right? You're serving us basketballs I'm, I'm, for I'm dinner, cutting right? Turkeys. I'm cutting turkeys over cutting here. Cutting the turkeys over here and barbecuing in the grill. Absolutely. <laughs> So let's get into your backstory, Chuck. Tell us a little bit about your art background, your design background. What has inspired you to go into this artistic direction? Well, thank you. Um, I started uh, I started painting when I was a kid, about like three years old. Um, wanted to be a basketball player, like many of us here. You know, some of us probably growing up in the same community, same background stories, um, and then you know, having that realization in like 10th and 11th grade that I'm not going to grow anymore or I'm not going to be, you know, uh, Steph Curry with the shot. Um, I started to lean into my artistic uh, creativity. Um, funny enough, I didn't, I didn't always want to be an artist, although I knew how to do art. Uh, I went into being a barber and um, barbering kind of led me to uh, the sports world. I, I ended up cutting a lot of people from the Washington Wizards, um, you know, 76ers. I have, I have friends and family that still actively cut for the 76ers. And um, I was always fascinated with the sports world. Um, fast forward, you know, five, six years later, um, I just used my art platform to highlight black culture and be authentic in telling our stories. And um, that has led me to do projects with Tops. Um, having my own baseball collection, uh, working on campaigns for James Harden, uh, linking up with Malcolm Jenkins of the New Orleans Saints to release our private collection that just dropped today actually in Saks, right in Beachwood, Ohio. Um, I was like, wait, I think I was at that Saks. <laughs> yeah, they were look, blasting the music. Out. Yeah, yeah, I this right, walked, it's right there. Okay, it's I, right I there. was there. I so, literally so, was like, so, there's a party. So you can Saks check. Right so you can check out our, our new collection. Um, I partnered up with Damari. That's his company. Wow. Um, but I think just using my art to help highlight African American community and our stories is what my mission is and what I continue to do, and it's opening up so many doors. And um, I'm just thankful that I'm able to inspire a lot of people that look like me that didn't know that they could do art and be here at this table in the All-Star Weekend, you know, so, yeah. Well, it's truly inspiring what you do. I, you. I can't believe I was there at Saks. <laughs> it was meant to be. I knew we were going to be at this Thank table, you. right? Thank but you. But congratulations you gotta, you gotta on get all get these collabs. Something. I know, size small nice. or extra small or medium, you know, <laughs> actually I'll take any size, I, I don't even care. <laughs> All right, last but not least, we've got Kevin with us from the Cleveland Cavaliers. He does some creative work over there as an art director. We are in Cleveland as well. I mean, what better of a place? Yes, yes. Welcome, welcome to our home. This it's freezing amazing. here, yeah. but I love it. A little cold, a little windy, but it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I think, you know, similar to some of these other stories, um, for me at a young age, it was, hey, how can I how can I find my way to the league? Like, how can I stay connected to sport? And, and basketball was a passion for me. Um, I grew up in the 80s, so it was trading cards. Um, and my dad worked for a print shop, so I was constantly sketching things. He'd take it to the print shop, bring it back. And I literally remember sitting there drawing, like if you can picture the old Bart Simpson kind of Air Jordan pose, like I would take custom jerseys, fill them out, like color them in, and I'm, I'm sending them, I'm mailing them to guys, David Robinson, Chris Weber, all these guys, um, trying to get autographs, and, and David Robinson actually sent one back to me, um, which was so cool. Like, so that was just art at a young age, just trying to be inspired, you know, take in culture. Um, it's wild how it's blown up now, and you have so much culture that can infuse us as people who work for teams. How can we link up with all these folks, you know, outside um, these individual brands, these like really cool culture pieces, and bring them back to basketball? You know, from a retail standpoint, it's all about coming up with cool collabs and, and what can we do, what can we create, how can we have these one-off drops and stuff. Um, so it's it's fun to work for a team, but be able to kind of lean into these other guys and these other folks at the table and, and bring art into our story and mix it up. You know, we work for a brand um, and, and it can get same old, same old a little bit. You know, we find ways to, to develop it and, and push it, but we want to be unique um, and it's cool to lean in and try to try to pull from these guys a little bit, you know, be inspired, but also, hey, what can we do? How can we how can we cook something up together? How can we come up with a cool drop? So that's always fun too. Yeah, I'm jealous of your job. I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> and also, if I can give you my Chris Weber card to get signed. <laughs> 
that would be great. It's wild because, you know, I, I think as a as a little kid, never did I think about getting to working in sports other than just playing in sports. You don't think of it that way. Um, and now with social media and, and, and fashion and culture and music and everything thing coming in, there's so many different outlets to still be connected to sport by not stepping onto the floor, which is which is so cool. It's so cool and just inspiring to see that there are careers like this one. I mean, I think a lot of younger kids would probably be like, oh, my God, I want to be like Kevin when I grow up, <laughs> truthfully. Uh, and you make the, the team look good. Thanks. You know, I uh, I moved here in, in 16. That was my first year with the Cavs. Coincidentally enough, it's the year we won the ring. So I like to think that, that you know, my brand design and my art direction is the reason that we have that championship here in Cleveland. Nothing to do with Kyrie or Braun or any of those guys. You're the secret sauce. Clearly, I knew it. There was something missing. Clearly, it's all related to brand design and art direction. Clearly. Yeah. All right. We'll keep it on the DL, though. Don't worry. Your secret's safe with this table right here. <laughs> All right, so on some closing notes, just if anyone wants to speak on other ideas that they have for the future ongoing, as far as future projects that they see kind of in the mix, I would love to hear from you on that. So take it away. If anybody is working on anything special, special creatively, would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, I'll go quick, because I know we have essentially no time. Uh, I'd say, I, I'm really working on my own on-camera presence, and that's something that I'm really excited about. I feel like a lot of my content that I do is me doing action things or capturing it in a very unique way. And um, so I'm working on that, and I just joined the ESPNW team, so hyper, hyper, hyper focusing on just- Congratulations. Yeah, women's sports and like making sure that they're getting the shine they deserve. So that's something that I'm really excited about. and. Uh, looking forward to trying to tell everyone's stories in a unique way. Well, can't wait to see you on the big screen one day, right? Ah. We're going to see you chatting it up. <laughs> a couple things. Uh, we're doing a collaboration with Complex over at Tower City all weekend long. The Aces Lounge powered by Complex. We got a lot of interviews behind the scenes, BTS with NBA, WNBA, and cultural influencers. So come check it out, Tower City, down the block. What we're excited about is this brand has been organically built over the last couple of years. So it caught traction of the NBA. So we're going to announce our NBA license in uh, April. So we're excited to roll out the logos of all the NBA teams. We'll do a Hustle and Heart series. If the Cleveland Cavaliers fans are listening, the Cavaliers, we should talk, is one of them. Minimum six teams, as you know. So we'll, we'll drop a Hustle and Heart Cleveland line. We're just excited. It just started from the bottom. We're growing up organically and more importantly just bringing a lot of the culture and the people who love the game together. So a few other things in the mix, but that's kind of the, the next phase for Brand Aces. And uh, we're excited that it's not just a line, it's more of a brand platform. And it's just impacting people, again, where the game all started, as you guys know. So. Well, congrats on the licensing. That's a, that's a big deal. Appreciate that. Really. <laughs> it's Kevin Bellow over there. My man uh, over there. Yes. <laughs> Partner man. Partner man over here. Oh, is your mic off? Mark off? Do we need to share? Do you want um, Hannah's mic, maybe? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it'll reach. Take it away. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> fail, got fail. You, okay. Got you, dog. That's all right. Oh, you got it? You got it? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Um, D's coming up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep it sh uh, short and sweet. But, you know, our main thing is, like, food, fashion, and fun. Um, you know, we're just, like, really bringing the uh, colorful flair back into fashion and art. Um, and yeah, you know, relaunching our website, doing like some cool NFT stuff. And um, we're doing like lots of like restaurant and architectural designs in uh, New York. So just, you know, just stay so tuned. You're the NFT one. We need to get that family discount <laughs> from. Right okay. now, everything's top secret, All but right. our, our new site will be launching. And, uh, yeah, what's the promo? What's the family promo? Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> <laughs> like one, two, three. Okay. Did they cut off I, our I mic? For me, for it's one of those things where you're always working on something. So it's not necessarily like what I'm doing right now. At any given moment, for any of us, any opportunity can come up where it could change your life. You know what I mean? Or it could be a brand that you never even thought, you know, would happen. So I think even for everybody listening, it's just one of those things where it's like we all have a story, but we all put the work in too. But now, at any given moment, it can happen and that's just for anybody else you know what i mean it's just about discovery once that moment comes once you get that break 
from there everything can you know change your life so it's not necessarily about what you're doing at this very moment but tomorrow could, could change your life it could be completely game changer you know what I mean? yeah so. well sounds like all the stories here as well couple incidences that happened, little Mark Jacobs meeting over there, a little baseball card or basketball card signing when you were a child and uh, you've just stumbled on Shaq's house, I don't know. I mean, uh, it just seems like everything has aligned quite perfectly for your creative outlets to really just transpire into something great. Uh, so it looks like we are going to be concluding here. Again, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us at the table. Each and every one of you truly deserves a seat here. I can't wait to see all of your successes in the future. I loved hearing all of your stories. I wish I could sit here for hours, actually. I could probably just chat. <laughs> So many things to ask, so many questions. Uh, but again, thank you, Wilson, for having us at this family reunion. Truly amazing to live like an athlete, as Wilson says. And I think that you are all literally doing just that in your careers. So again, thank you so much. Appreciate you.